Hello and welcome to Bruce Springsteen Guitar Lessons. Today's lesson is going to be Candy's Room from Darkness on the Edge of Town. Thanks very much to subscribe star CJ Yeckley for the request. Welcome back, hope you enjoyed that walkthrough. So now what we're gonna do is go through all of the individual parts. Okay, so this song is in the key of G Mixolydian, which is a mode, but most people will know it by the parent key of C major. Uh, and then the guitar solo is in the key of B minor. Uh, there's a lot of live versions out there. They tend to be a tone higher, that'll be for various re reasons. And also, um, Bruce seems to vary up his guitar playing. So like for example, the Houston 78 version, he's doing a lot more lead stuff than he is in later years. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Tempo is approximately 150 BPM. So quite a fast song and brilliant song from Darkness on the Edge of Town. Okay, so let's take a look at the chords, ver chords first. Okay, so what we've got is a G5 chord. So you can either play this with your first uh, and third fingers or first and little fingers. So that's five, fifth fret and D. Uh, and then seventh fret G. And I think that's one of the reasons that sometimes in the live versions you might play an A, so you can also play the open A string, but here you have to block it off. Okay, so that's G5 uh, that you'll be using a lot in the verses. Uh, and then also in the choruses, you can bass a lot on this Houston 78 version. Um, the first finger, fifth fret D, third finger, 7th fret G, little finger, 8th fret B. So that's kind of a, we call it kind of a D-shaped uh, G5 power chord. Okay, so you've got two versions of G5 there, two, two strings and then uh, three strings. Cool, we've also got a C bar chord, uh, this is A-shaped bar chord, so bar the third fret from the A string, and then the third finger barring from the, the fifth fret and the D, the G and the B strings. So that's C major um, bar chord there and also open version as well. Third finger, third fret A, middle finger, second fret D, open G, first finger, third fret B, and then open. Eastern to standard C major there. We've also got a, a slash chord, which I can definitely see him playing this in the Houston version. Um, 
so that's kind of makes me think he was doing this on the record uh, might not be though um, so third finger seventh fret on the d first finger fifth fret on the g middle finger sixth fret of the b so this is called an f over a chord but um in the song structure i'll kind of just chop it up on the screen now uh, i'll refer to that as just an f chord so there's lots of ways of playing f um in the chorus we're going to do this way okay so third finger seventh fret d first finger fifth fret g middle finger sixth fret b so that's an f over a chord okay and then we've got a normal b minor chord okay so i'm above the second fret there from the A string, third finger, fourth fret D, little finger, fourth fret G, middle finger, third fret B. Okay, and then we've got an A major. Bruce loves to play his A major chords like this, where you're just playing the middle four strings, making sure you're not playing, barring that, that um, fret as well. So it's just first finger barring the, the D, the G, and the B strings on the second fret. Of course, that's A, and then you've got your classic kind of F sharp minor over C sharp chord. So in the song structure, I'll just refer to that as an F sharp minor. It's basically like an F sharp minor chord, uh, but you're not barring um, all six strings. So third finger, fourth fret, A, little finger, fourth fret, D, barring the second fret on the G, the B, and the E strings. So Bruce likes to play this um, as his F sharp minor. It just means it's easier to chop and change between this and the open chords. Cool, and then we've got a G major chord, so you can play it. First, second, and third there. First finger, second fret, A. Middle finger, third fret, E. Third finger, high E. Or again, Bruce plays G's, G's in lots of different ways. You can do it with the second, third, and fourth. Or even block out the A string and do it like that, which Bruce probably does it most commonly. Um, so that's your G major chord, okay. Uh, and then we've got an E major chord as well. First finger, first fret, G. Middle finger, second fret, A. Third finger, second fret, D. Okay, it's a classic chord there. And you've got an open power chord. First finger, second fret, um, G. Third finger, third fret, B. So this is a D5 power chord. Open power chord, really nice chord. Uh, and then you've also got an F over C chord as well. Okay, so very similar way that the way that the F sharp minor works. It's like an F chord, but just five strings out of the six. Using your first finger to bar the B and the E strings. Middle finger, second fret G. Third finger, third fret A. Little finger, third fret D. So that's an F over C chord. Cool, so there are all the chords, okay? So um, also it's worth bearing in mind that Steve and Bruce are doing kind of different parts here. So in, in the verses, Bruce is actually doing something quite minimal. So we'll take a look at the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth verses. And basically, if you're, for example, if you're doing this in a band and you're doing the part of Bruce, all you're basically doing is this G5 is kind of like a drone chord um, and then Steve will be doing the chords um, behind it so it works really cleverly and I think again this is maybe why he does this in the key of A live more often because he can play the A string and you know pick the A string as well as doing the chord but if we're in the key of G the album version first finger yeah so this is the G5 chord that we did earlier first or th and third or first and fourth and you're simply doing that common strumming pattern, the down, down, up, up, down, up, making sure to block the other strings. I'm using my middle finger there to block the E and the A. Use your little finger to block the B uh, and the high E. So it's only two strings you want ringing here, okay? So strumming-wise, you've got a quarter note, which is one beat long, then six quavers or eighth notes, which are half a beat long, and then one of them is tied on beat three. So that's why we're going down, down, up, up, down, up, or counting wise, one, two, and three, and four. Cool, so yeah, so basically for the, um, obviously you've got the intro, that's why I thought I'd do a little bit of piano this time, just because there's a big gap before the guitars even appear. Uh, so it's the fourth verse, again, keep double checking with the song structure. So the fourth verse, you're simply gonna do seven bars of this G5. Um, so one, two, Cool, and then if you're doing the part of uh, Steve, so again, I've tabbed all of Steve's parts and Bruce's parts out in, in Guitar Pro. So if you want any of the tabs, obviously head over to jsmusicscore.co.uk and get them, you'll be able to get them there um, from at least from Monday or early um, the following week that this is released. Or you can go on Subscribe Star and get stuff sent out to your email on the third of every month. So um, 
Yes, yeah, so um, there will be will be it'll be worth listening to the kind of guitar profile or obviously the the backing track that I've made, so you can hear that. Well, actually, Bruce is just doing this or something similar to that, and then Steve will be doing the kind of main chords in the background. So basically, with Steve, take that strumming pattern and then just do that with uh, two bars of G, then F over C, then C. The idea is that the combination of that just works brilliantly, very simple over that chord progression. So that, so that seven bar chord progression, you're gonna do that in the fourth verse, the fifth verse, and then the sixth verse. Okay, so let's now take a look at the chorus. Okay, so here what we're gonna do is a slightly different um, strumming pattern. It sounds like it's doing something like this, down, 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 up, down, up. Again, feel free to change this up with Bruce and even Steely as well, they'll be changing it up live all the time, okay? So it doesn't have to be fixed, you know, strumming pattern the whole time. So, so what we've got here, the chorus, we're gonna do, again, Bruce's part. We're gonna do C major for two bars. Uh, a strumming pattern, you're gonna go two crotchets or chord notes, one, two, and then four quavers or eighth notes, one, two, three, and four, and, okay? So you do two bars of that, one, two, three, and four, and one, and then the F over A chord. And with that one, make sure you block out the A, the E strings as well, so it's just nice and crisp. Uh, and then G major, instead of the G major on the song structure there, that's what Steve will be doing, you'll do the G5 chord, the full three note one. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. And then back to C. And then F over A. Okay, cool. Um, it's definitely worth watching that Houston 1978 because it's you can see the vo voicings he's using are completely different to like later tours especially. But um, I think probably Bruce maybe delegates a lot more of the solos. Like Steve, for example, seventh and eighth verses, Steve does that in a lot of the recent versions of the last sort of 20 years, and in the Houston versions, uh, you know, early sort of late 70s, that's when Bruce will be taking more of the lead parts. So. It's worth bearing that in mind. So I'll just play that whole uh, first chorus, okay? So this is Bruce parts, okay? So two bars of C. Two bars of F over A. Two bars of uh, G5. One bar of C. One bar of F over A. Cool, and then basically uh, for Steve's parts, he's just gonna go, same thing, but with open chords, C. F, G, C. And the idea is they'll link together um, and work really well. Okay, so that's the first chorus. Um, so we've basically done now the, you know, the verses, fourth, fifth, and sixth verses. Uh, and then we've also done the first chorus as well. Let's now take a look at the chords behind the guitar solo. So the guitar solo will be on uh, Subscribe Star and Patreon uh, probably tomorrow evening. And they normally release the guitar solo tutorial to release a day after this video is on YouTube. So let's take a look at the chords. So this is pretty much, I think, what what at, uh, what Steve will be playing, something like this. So you've basically got a B minor and let it ring for two bars. One, two, three, four, one, and then A major, same thing. Two, three, four, one, two, three. F sharp minor, two, three, four, one, two, and then G, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Cool, now a slightly different strumming pattern I think is going on here. So B minor, um, for two bars, we're gonna go down, down, this, up, down, up. In terms of timing wise, you go one, two, three, and four, and. okay? So that's uh, two crotchets or quarter notes, then four quavers or eighth notes, but one of them is tied. One, two, three, and four, and 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 one, Cool, yes, yeah, so it's basically the same structure there uh, twice, but instead of the um, G at the end, it's E major at the end. So let me just play the whole of the chords behind the guitar solo. So you've got B minor, one, two, three, four, 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 
three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. New swing pack. Up, down, up, down. Cool, so there are the chords behind the guitar solo. Let's now take a look at the second chorus. Okay, so it sounds like that Steve, uh, there's a little bit more oomph in the, the, the sort of volume levels. It might be that um, one person on the record is playing power chords uh, or just really heavy kind of downstrokes. Um, so what I've done on the tab for um, the transcribe for Steve's part, so basically two bars of C5 power chords. So first finger, third fret. Um, a, third finger, fifth fret, D, little finger, fifth fret, G. You might be playing open chords, but yes, on the backing track that I've made uh, for this, um, again, you can get any backing tracks on the subscribe star or on my website, JS Music Call, if you like the sound of those. Um, yeah, so two bars of C5, this is Steve we're doing first, so C5 down strokes, one, and G5, same shape, uh, just next set of strings, two bars. Back to C5, C5 for one bar, D5, just two um, frets up from the C5, one bar, and then F5 for two bars, then C5 um, for two bars. Also, just do that again. So these are the chords. I think roughly again, you could even just do them in open chords if you're not comfortable with the power chords. It might even be he's doing that on record. It just sounds like there's a little bit more energy uh, in that second chorus. So two bars of C5, then G5 two bars, C5 two bars, G5 D5. F5 for two bars, C5 for two bars. Then you go into the seventh verse. Yeah, so then for the, um, because Steve is doing um, power chords there, it might be, well be that Bruce has gone back to doing open chords. So here, down, down, up, up, down, up. So these will be Bruce's part. So what, two bars of C. G major for one bar. And then that extra cool little riff. Uh, so here I'm using middle finger uh, 12th fret B, th uh, third finger 13th fret B, and then hit it and slide up to the 15th fret, getting quite aggressive. Uh, bit of vibrato as well. So time wise, one and two and three, four. One and two and three, four, like that. Okay, so um, that's bar four of the second chorus, and then back to C for two bars. And G major. Five. F over C for two bars. C, bar, C for two bars. Cool, I'll do that one more time. So this is the parts for Bruce in the second chorus. Again, keep referencing back to the song structure as well. They're always in the description as well. Uh, just to, so you can piece everything together and break it parts down. So two bars of C. G major. G5, F over C, C major. Cool, so there are all the chords behind the guitar solo and the second chorus. Okay, so let's now take a look at the lead riffs in the seventh and the eighth verses. Okay, so what we're going to do is start on the eighth fret of the B string. One, two, three, four. Okay, and they're going to go six, eight on the B string. And then eighth fret, uh, bend and release, a one and a half beats. And then sixth fret, which is one and a half beats as well. So timing there, you've got one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. Bar three, same as bar one, just eighth fret, the whole bar. Uh, and now you're gonna do the same riff as in bar two, but that eighth, the eighth riff, eighth fret that follows, you're gonna come in half a beat earlier. So you're gonna go one and two and three and four and. Okay, and then it, it's tied for two beats. Okay, so so far we've got this. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. 
one and two and three and four and one two then you've got um grace note hammer on five to six on the b string and then goes to the fifth fret afterwards so you go three and and let it ring out for the rest of the bar three and four and and then seventh fret g one two three for a whole bar it sounds like he's doing this so seven five on the g one and two and let it ring for the second beat one and two and then uh, slide from five to seven on the g to get ready to start that riff again so the whole of the seventh first one two three four one and two and three and four one two three four one and two and three and four and one two three and four one two three four one and two and three and then you go into the eighth first first four bars here exactly the same as the seventh first one, three four one and two and three and four one two three four one and two and oops okay and then bar four so you let that eighth fret ring out and then on the end of two you're going to do the sixth fret of the b so it's one two and three four and on the fourth uh, beat play the fifth fret b string so one two and three four and the next two bars are the same you're going to do seventh fret g one two and these are dotted quarter notes or crotchets or one and a half beats again so one two and then six five on the b again and you're going to do that bar again. One, two, and three, four. Then fifth fret G. One, two, then an and of two. Bend and release third fret on the third fret B. And then first fret B, third fret uh, B. One, two, th one, two, three. Lots of vibrato. And I think on beat four of the next bar, so you keep going with that one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, on beat four. And then you go up to that 15th fret, that final bit uh, over the D minor piano. So um, what I'll do is I'll just play the whole of the eighth verse, um, which is the last bit of the song, okay? So eighth uh, fret, one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four, one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one two three and four one two and three four one two and three four one two and three four one two three four one two three four one two three four um, yeah also make sure you come in on the end of two on bar five there um, so bar four again one and two and three and four and one two and three four Make sure you do that. I don't think I did that when I just played it through. Cool. And obviously double check the walkthrough. You can slow down any video on YouTube, not just my channel. Click on the cog icon if you're struggling with some of those timing there when I'm playing it through with the backing track. So uh, that's all the parts. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, it's a great song from an uh, absolutely brilliant album. Uh, thanks to CJ again for requesting this song. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it. Any comments, let me know below and subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye. If you'd like to get guitar profiles, tab PDFs, backing tracks from any of these tutorials, head over to either the Subscribe Star page or my website, jsmusicscore.co.uk. Remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. Thanks very much. See you on the next one.